Hi, I'm GM Matthew Sadler. And I'm WAM Natasha Regan. Welcome to this, the latest in our series of Alpha Zero openings videos. This video is about the Carlsbad pawn structure, um, another one in that series um, as part of the Queen's Gambit declined opening. Uh, we have already explored Alpha Zero's preferred piece placement for black um, against the Carlsbad. <coughs> Excuse me. And in this video, we'll look at a new approach by Stockfish with a more active placing of black's king's bishop, so on d6 instead of e7. So the diagram you see in front of you now is Alpha Zero's preferred way of playing for black. Uh, we will also show you Stockfish's preferred way and then how Alpha Zero responds to it. Yeah, I mean, the uh, the key point about uh, this way of developing, it's the classical way of developing and Alpha Zero plays it in all its games as black. Um, the bishop goes to e7, the knight on b8 is moved round to f8, uh, and the bishop on c8 is left at home. So, uh, and the idea then is that black will probably play something like knight h5 or maybe knight e4 to relieve the pressure on um, on his uh, uh, on, on that white exerts with the, with the bishop on g5 and then move uh, the development on from there. Um, Stockfish plays um, um, uh, an interesting little um, uh, little plan, and uh, actually it's been. Um, it's been this sort of form of development has been seen in uh, in quite a bit of top level chess. Um, Magnus Carlsen has been playing a, a form of development like that uh, uh, quite a bit, actually. Um, and the way that uh, Stockfish does it is playing a, a bishop to d6, not to e7. Um, and the idea is that um, the, uh, the light square bishop is moved early to e6 and then this knight on here will move to d7. Um, so um, black actually breaks the pin by developing the knight to d7 and developing his light squared bishop first um, and also places the bishop on d6 more actively. I mean, as always, with all forms of development, there's pluses and minuses. Uh, it's a very interesting form of development and also very interesting to see how Alpha Zero goes about dealing with it. So we're going to show you a game with Alpha Zero white and Stockfish black. And it's a game that didn't feature in our book, Game Changer, so it's new material here. Okay, let's dive into it. Welcome back. Going to start with the game now. So this is Alpha Zero against uh, Stockfish. Um, so the opening uh, was a standard QGD. You see it quite a lot in the in games between uh, uh, these two opponents, and here. Um, this is the uh, the unusual form of development that uh, that Stockfish plays, but it's very very interesting. So um, uh, Black not trying to uh, to uh, to counter the pin on the on the knight by um, uh, by interposing the bishop, but actually going to develop rather differently and playing bishop e6 here. And Black's going to break the pin and just defend the uh, uh, the knight on f6 with the knight on d7. So here, Alpha Zero, as White takes the opportunity to weaken the Black King side by playing Queen B3, and this provokes Black into playing B6, which is a weakened move. Yeah, so White plays here Queen B3, and then um, yeah, B6 is uh, is necessary. I mean, it's a drawback to playing uh, Bishop B6 that uh, Black can't play a move like uh, Queen C7, for example, because Bishop takes F6 would be. Uh, very unpleasant. And once Alpha Zero has achieved the aim with the Queen, then Alpha Zero redeploys the Queen straight away back to Queen D1. So it's a theme we've seen in a lot of Alpha Zero games that once a piece has done its job on a particular square, then it gets straight away redeployed. Yeah, of course. And also, I suppose Alpha Zero is always thinking about a kingside attack, so just thinking that it's going to move its uh, its Queen over there. This is quite striking, doesn't wait for it to be driven away, just uh, moves it uh, away straight away. So uh, Stockfish continued with its uh, normal development, rook c8, rook c1, rook e8, and then this move for uh, h3. And this is a crucial moment now for black. How is black going to develop further? Because the queen side expansion is not going to be easy for black. Um, because black will create further weaknesses with any pawn move on the queen side. 
So Stockfish comes up with a very radical solution. Yeah, I mean, um, just uh, you'll see you see why um, why is this move B six been very weakening? Well, if you just look at, uh, at at a typical move like C five, then White has got this unpleasant move, and uh, it actually gets even worse because here we play Bishop B seven, Rook C seven, and then Knight B five. You can see all these light squares that have been weakened by uh, by this move Queen B three suddenly turn out to be horrific for uh, for Black. So. The the straightforward move isn't there, and uh, and Stockfish uh, comes up with uh, um, with a, an amazing concept. But there's actually something even more amazing about it, um, because uh, well, we asked uh, Alpha Zero yeah. uh, about it, and Alpha Zero, analysing on one minute a move, saw this main line and also all its moves from its main line up to move twenty seven were Alpha Zero's main line at one minute a move. Yeah, so it's quite uh, quite quite incredible, actually. It's uh, I think that just shows that Alpha Zero felt that um, uh, this was a very crucial moment, and that some real decisive action from Black was uh, was required. Uh, but um, I mean, it is amazing because uh, along the way, it sacrifices a couple of pawns, the exchange, all that sort of stuff, and yet this was just Alpha Zero's main line, you know, without thinking for very long. Uh, so yeah, one of those amazing things, you know, that uh, that really. Uh, always blows your mind when you uh, when you analyze with alpha zero so g5 uh, breaking the pin but um i mean doubling up white's pawns but of course yeah i mean it's also opening the f file against the king but the follow-up is uh, is even more incredible it's this move g4 really going for it yeah i mean it's got a very specific purpose this move uh, g4 G4 is attempting to get some more room for black by securing a foothold on G4 for the knight. Yeah, I mean, for example, the idea is that after HG, black plays knight takes G4. And even though black's king is open, it's not easy for white to get at, um, at the black king. And the, the, the reason for that is the pawn on G3. I mean, if that pawn was on H2, for example, then... Um, well, quite apart from being able to drive away the black knight with h3, um, the white queen would be able to get, you know, over to the king's side. But here, in actual fact, this pawn is blocking that. And that's why the, the you know, the um, uh, the black king, despite being open, it's, it's relatively safe. Um, but obviously, alpha zero um, is not going to... Uh, is not going to give outposts like that away. It's mm. going to, uh, to try and do something uh, much more uh, aggressive on the king's side. And Alpha Zero fights directly against the plan, and Alpha Zero doesn't care how many pawns it gives up along the way. So Knight H4 was played, aiming for the F5 uh, outpost. G takes H3, and um, you know this is again very typical of Stockfish. It's just trying to, uh, you know, well first of all it's stripping away the protection around White's king, uh, but also by taking this pawn H3, aiming to play H takes G2 and get G4 for the knight. So Alpha Zero plays Rook F4. Just taking control of this g4 square. H takes g2. And Stockfish just keeps on going. Yeah, just keeps on going. That's right. And here, uh, Alpha Zero played uh, Queen f3, which is uh, uh, actually, I think, probably the best move. Um, but when I saw what happened in the game, um, we'll just uh, sh show you that uh, uh, st st Stockfish's next move was this move h5 in order to um, in order to uh, still get an outpost for the knight on g4. When I saw that, I got very interested in continuation, which was uh, to play king g2, and then if h5, then I wanted to play this move bishop f5. And um, uh, the idea is that if black continues naively, I suppose you'd say, with a plan of uh, of knight g4, then we're going to take takes and rook f1 it's a dangerous attack mm, all the pieces are lining up against the king all the pieces are lining up and i, I went a little bit further i got uh, um i got quite uh, quite uh, carried away with this position so knight f6 i play queen g5 um and then knight g8 uh is a possible defense for black uh, black's covering this square with a knight and you know trying to get the uh, the white queen away and hopefully run with his king but white's got a great little idea, knight g6, um, king g7, only move, knight e7 check, king f8. 
And um, now the key point again is that um, uh, if white plays something like queen takes g8, king e7 runs. Mm. Um, but I don't know, white's, um, uh, white's got a fantastic move here, um, which is uh, well, really quite beautiful. And I haven't really seen uh, uh, combinations like this, this too often. It's this move bishop h7. So the idea is you leave this knight on e7, black can't take it with a king, and if black takes it with a rook or with a queen, then queen takes g8, checkmate. Have I, I did have to spend quite a bit of time on this, because um, although, you know, there's some sort of equilibrium in this position, um, but how is white going to improve his position? I mean, I'm not threatening to play queen takes g8, because uh, the king will take on e7, and knight g6 check would be met by king g7. So a mate is not yet uh, clearly in view, but there is a, a piece that isn't doing very much. If you think of alpha zero, it does these long maneuvers to get its pieces into play. Mm. And there's one piece that isn't working too hard. It's that knight on c3. That's right. So the way to do it... But this is incredible, just quietly bringing in another piece when all the pieces are lined up. Yeah, and that knight is aiming for f4 and then either g6 or e6 and i just have to show you this beautiful line it's not um uh black's best defense i think black is lost actually in uh, in this position but um uh, the most beautiful line i found was uh, c5 knight f4 threatening knight takes e6 black plays f6 aiming desperately if knight takes e6 to uh to run with king takes e7 the queen's attacked but this queen's also attacked but then we've got this uh Beautiful move, knight takes g8, and after f takes g5, we've got the amazing knight takes e6, double checkmate. It's very nice. It is quite nice, actually. <laughs> it's uh, really quite beautiful. I mean, it's always the case with uh, with uh, these Alpha Zero Stockfish games that the uh, the very most beautiful lines are in the notes because obviously both both sides are so strong, they see all these sort of things coming. But uh, I thought it was a very uh, a very alpha zero attack, to be honest. Uh, the one thing I, when I put this to uh, to alpha zero, uh, this move king g two, it came up with a, a very nice idea, which was this move knight f eight, and after queen f three, black plays this move knight eight h seven, and the um, the idea is actually that after rook h one, you go knight g five, and you're actually going for a different knight outpost, so mm. not not the one on g four, but the one on g five. And again, this is pretty tough to uh, to break through. Um, I mean, I, if I play something like queen f two, then um, I think the knight g four is quite dangerous. So I, I'd have to play something like queen d one to keep track of uh, to keep hold of g four. But yeah, then blacks managed to beat you back a bit. I think it's always you know from a practical point of view, I think I'd always really prefer white to be honest because the black king sides are weak. Mm. But I think that black's probably doing uh, all right. I mean, I think Alpha Zero's Estes has a uh, 50.8% expected score, which is, you know... That's really close. That's really yeah. close to equal, isn't it? So Alpha Zero played Queen F3. And Stockfish played H5. Uh, you'll notice that Queen F3 actually stops this manoeuvre, Knight F8 to H7. So... Uh, Knight f5 from uh, from uh, alpha zero, stopping knight g4 again, uh, because uh, that would uh, just be taken with rook g4. So Stockfish plays uh, knight f8. Knight h6 check, king g7, king g2 calm. But now knight g6 from, uh, from Stockfish. And alpha zero ups the ante yet again. And sacrifice an exchange on top of the two pawns already sacrificed. Yeah, and this, remember, was all part of the, the line that Alpha Zero saw at move 14. So, uh, I mean, that, I, I don't know, I find that quite just just amazing. Rook f1, knight f4, queen f4. And here it looks, to be honest, as if um, uh, black's in a bit of trouble. I mean, queen g5 check is coming in. And, uh, um, well, on my hardware, uh, oops, uh, my... Uh, Stockfish engine was uh, was looking a lot at uh, knight g4, which it was assessing as uh, quite decent for a while. But if you leave it for uh, a large number of hours, then this continuation uh, ends up being well extremely unpleasant for uh, for black. I mean, black's the exchange uh, uh, the exchange up. But white's actually looking to play moves like queen g5. Um, the knight can come round to e2 as well. e4 is coming in as well. It's just very difficult for black mm. to get free. It's one of these posi positions where white's pieces have much more potential. 
There's more potential than blacks, and blacks are a bit stuck, and that king especially. Yeah, I mean, the uh, the rooks don't have much scope, really. I mean, you're up in material, but it uh, reminds me a lot of uh, of, uh, of Shogi, actually. Uh, um, if, you, uh, if you're watching our channel, you'll see that we're uh, we're now doing a series of uh, videos, uh, uh, Shogi for chess players. <clears throat> it's very interesting sometimes to compare the, uh, the games. And uh, in Shogi, there's a lot of exchange sacrifices where a bishop ends up being stronger than, uh, than a rook because the rook's got no potential. And I think this is one of those uh, one of those situations here. But um, um, Stockfish plays um, a very strong defensive move, uh, but one that Alpha Zero had anticipated, and it's this move King F8. It looks like it just gives away the uh, the knight on um, on F6 in actual fact, but um, the amazing point is that after takes takes, Black just comes back with King G7, and the um, and the knight is lost. So he's managed to get into an ending. Yeah, it's true. Amazing. So um, Alpha Zero had seen this and came up with uh, with uh, a beautiful little idea, and that's this move G4. So um, Rook C7 was uh, was uh, was played, um, but now Alpha Zero can uh, can take on F6. The idea being that after Queen F6, Rook F6, if Black plays King G7, then we can play G5 and, and protect everything. everything. However, um, Stockfish played h takes g4, rook f4, king e7, bishop e2, and knight g4. And this ending is slightly better for white. I mean, um, uh, black's got a rook and a pawn for two pieces, so it's slightly slightly better for white. But these are the type of positions that Stockfish holds. Um, it, um, it's very, very good at holding these slightly worse, more somewhat passive positions, but not creating any more weaknesses. And, um, well, the game continued for 150 moves, but, uh, yeah, I mean, Alpha Zero has always made progress, but Stockfish, uh, Stockfish held. I'm not going to show you that, uh, because it was, uh, it's not uh, amazingly exciting. It's just, uh, two superhuman engines keeping each other in balance. But I thought the, um, um, first of all, the development plan in the opening is very interesting from, uh, from Stockfish. And I thought Alpha Zero's way of playing against it was very interesting too. And then, um, this whole, plan of defense, very typical of Stockfish, um, essentially trying to get footholds for its pieces and at the same time distracting the opponent's pieces, trying to weaken the opponent's king as well to open up, you know, random tactical chances. And then Alpha Zero's typical way of dealing with it, which is, you know, give up pawns all the way just for attacking momentum. And, uh, well, I mean, uh, the defense that uh, Stockfish found, you know, that Alpha Zero had also anticipated on move 14, it was fantastic and uh yeah position ended up in in balance slight advantage for white but uh but not enough to convert so a lot really really fantastic game really worth sharing and again one of those games that uh we had so many good games that this one didn't make uh, make it into the book but uh had a great deal of pleasure analyzing it so hope you enjoyed that um make sure you subscribe to our channel lots of good stuff coming in if you want to learn shogi as well then uh keep watching our channel and um yeah i mean uh hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you around thank you for watching